Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to a new week and uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, Louis, do you mind leading us in prayer, please? Uh, uh, Prabhakar, maybe you can lead us, please. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, acknowledge your holy name. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Father. Um, as we are entering into the new week, Father, lead us in your own way. Give us wisdom and knowledge to acquire whatever you want to teach us, Father. Bless Pastor Paul as well, Father. In this marketplace ministry, we learn many things, Father. And today, give us your um, holy leadership so that we can learn and attain uh, quantity and quality knowledge. Uh, I dedicate each and every member of class to under your throne of grace. I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Prabhakar. Okay, uh, so last week uh, we completed on chapter 8. Uh, we looked at people, processes, performance, and rewards, and we looked at how, uh, you know, as organizations we had to deal with people. There are certain processes in place. Uh, there are uh, certain performances and rewards that have to be acknowledged. And uh, remember that the whole the whole thing of an organization is about people, right? So we need to ensure that uh, people are passionate, interested, uh, you know, looking forward to working, whether it's in the corporate or whether it's ministry also, right? Because many times in ministry we may uh, you know, uh, monotony sets in and we may get bored and we feel that, hey, you know, this is not what I want to do. Uh, but a as an organization, we should ensure that, uh, you know, people are, uh, you know, getting that fuel that they need to towards fulfilling their goal. Uh, and so we looked at all of that in chapter eight. Uh, this week, we'll move to chapter nine. And uh, uh, I know that last week, I think Kennedy had asked a question regarding uh, retirement and ministry, uh, but I just realized that we do have a chapter on retirement. So uh, we will look at that later on as well. So I don't know if Kennedy is here. But anyways, so let's go to chapter nine. Now, this chapter, uh, we'll just go a little quick, right? Uh, uh, we'll just look at some important points, but not all the points. Uh, workplace relationships. Now, all of us, you know, uh, pre-COVID, uh, we probably working. If those who are working in the corporate sector, we are giving forty to fifty hours in the workplace, right? So probably spending more time in the workplace than uh, with family, right? Because Monday to Friday, we go to office. We're there for eight hours or even more at times. So, uh, and so we are dealing with people again, uh, and we cannot live an isolated life. We cannot say, no, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'll come, I'll do my work and go. That's not possible, right? Uh, in a workplace, we will have to have relationships with people. There are interpersonal relationships. Uh, there are conflicts. There are misunderstandings. There are uh, you know, people with different temperaments. And so this chapter, we look at how... Uh, we can maintain w good workplace relationships, right? Uh, and this applies even to ministry, right? Uh, whatever we are learning here uh, is even for those in ministry as well. We just translate it, apply it in our lives. First, very, very, very important thing to remember uh, uh, in relationships is love. Maintain love. That is the basics of human relationships, right? Uh, uh, Jesus summed it up so well when, when you know, uh, the disciples, he told the disciples, if you love your neighbor, uh, uh, it's like, love God, love your neighbor, you fulfilled all the commandments. Right? So let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, very common verse, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 to 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 Love is patient and kind. It is not jealous or considered or proud. Love is not ill-mannered or selfish or irritable. 
Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. Love is never gives up, and its faith, hope, and patience never fails. Amen. 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 Thank you, Abhinas. Right. So the basics of a good relationship is love. Right. Now, sometimes, you know, we've got all these things, targets to achieve. We've got you know, uh, things that are ahead, deadlines, meetings, quality, quantity, uh, you know, work-related things. Uh, and through all of this, I, uh, uh, we forget, we must not forget that we are dealing with people and we must walk in love, right? Uh, uh, remember that, you know, when we are sitting in an office, remember that people are around us are people who are going through the same kind of things in life that we are going through, right? Uh, each one has their own story. Each one has their own personality. Each one have their own challenges. Maybe each one have their own difficulties. And, you know, uh, and so we, as, as people of God, must remember to walk in love. I remember this one time, uh, I think I was... Uh, very young, right? We were working in the corporate uh, 21, 22. And not really, you know, too much into the Lord. But I remember working in this office and this guy would always be upset. He wouldn't talk to anybody, right? And he would come into office. He would, you know, he would just sit in his place. He wouldn't, he would go out on his breaks alone. Uh, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't talk much. He'd just be on his own every time. And and so I was new to the team. So I used to ask my team members, why does this guy not talk to anybody? He's part of our team. And he wouldn't sit with our team. The whole team is sitting. So he would choose a place somewhere else. Um, and since he was you know, a tenured person, maybe about five, six years in the company, nobody really bothered about it. Uh, but I, I was really bothered about it. I was wondering, why is he not you know, sitting with our team? And why is he... You know, uh, he would come for the team meetings. He would just sit. He wouldn't even talk anything. He'd just go off. He would never come for our team outings or team lunch. And nobody in our team really bothered about it. They said, no, he is like that itself. I remember just going to him one day and saying, hey, you know, why don't you come here? Why don't you sit with our team? Why don't you, you know, uh, talk to us and, you know, be with us? We are a team. Uh, uh, and he said, no, no, I don't, I, I prefer not to talk. And uh, he just brushed me off. Uh, but I remember, uh, I felt very bad, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not talking in the spiritual sense, like I felt God's presence, no, no. Just in the naturally, right? Just, I, I felt bad for this guy. And I said, uh, I mean, I can't help him in any way, but, uh, but I said, okay, I want to know what, why does he do this? Uh, and so I would go every day, right? I would say, hey, uh, come, I'm going for tea break. You come with me. Uh, he would say no. So every day, and finally he got bored of saying no. He felt bad, I guess, because he told no to me like 10 times. He said, okay, wait, I'll come with you one day. And so during that time, just a 10-minute break, we began to talk and he began to share things about his life and how he lost his uh, brother through uh, who committed suicide. And after hearing that news, his mother just collapsed and a few days later she died and uh, a happy family just all of a sudden lost his mother lost his brother and going through so much trouble and he didn't feel love he didn't feel accepted and uh, uh, I remember you know just just talking to him right we didn't share anything about God uh, but just you know talking to him and a couple of weeks later he just came and he started sitting with the team he opened up, he started talking to people and, uh, you know, he, he started opening up. I realized that, hey, all he needed was somebody to go and he wanted somebody to hear his story. That's it. So in, when it comes to relationships with people in the office, yes, there are deadlines that are, you know, things that we have to do, uh, tasks and, you know, all, all of this, but don't forget that we are dealing with people, love them, right? Two, when you have an opportunity to bless somebody, do it. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. 
Let's read Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. Uh, Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. Do not withhold good from those to whom is it is due. When it is in the power of your hand to do so, do not, do not say to your neighbor, go and come back and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avinas. So here again, do not withhold good from those to from those to whom it is due. Now, you know, uh, I'm sure you've seen on the internet, right? You've seen those uh, videos where it says random acts of kindness where you go to people and especially the homeless, they go, they just offer them pizzas or something to eat and their faces light up. They're so, oh, it's so happy. You know, when we have an opportunity to bless somebody. Now, I'm not talking about only, you know, buying something for someone or a material thing, but just a random act of kindness, right, can really bring somebody into, uh, you know, uh, in the workplace, can really be, uh, can light up somebody's day, right? Uh, it can be a helper. Uh, it may be a simple thing as, you know, maybe offering a coffee, uh, uh, you know, I remember this one time, uh, you know, in the IT place, IT sector, we, we had these cafeterias. And so sometimes you the line is so long and we have a 10 minute break. So we need to get what we want and quickly rush back to the uh, to our workplace, uh, to the to our work for our desk. And so this one time long back, I, I just remember this and uh, I was standing and the line was too long. I wanted to get a juice or something. I don't remember. The line was too long. You know, as I was standing there, uh, I, I began to walk back. I said, okay, it's not going to happen. I need to go back in 10 minutes. And this young man, right, probably in his uh, early 40s, I guess he said, uh, I, I don't even know him. right? He's in a different team. Uh, he said, uh, hey, what happened? Why are you going? I said, no, I got to go back because I, I, I think I have only two, three minutes left and I the line's too long. And he said, come. He he gave me a place in front of him and then just, you know, the next two people and I went for it. And I remember looking at him and, and I was so happy. The whole day I was like, this man helped me, right? He was able to give me a spot uh, and he helped me get this, uh, you know, get a place in front of him. He didn't have to do that. Uh, uh, you know, and and so when we bless people, when we have the opportunity to, it brings good workplace relationships, right? Be sensitive to people's feelings, emotional and intelligence matters, right? So there's something called as EQ. I'm sure you've heard of that EQ and IQ. Uh, so emotional intelligence is knowing how to respond to people's feelings and i think we all know that uh, you know when people are hurt going through uh, difficult times uh, maybe sometimes you know your boss comes and he's caught up in a weird mood and you know, he's just upset uh, don't go in a rage and say so if he gets angry what should i do about it no uh, i understand that even though he's a boss he's a person he goes through emotional problems he goes through you know, ups and downs in life uh, doesn't mean because he's a boss, everything's just working fine in his life. Probably has more things in his mind than us, right? So be sensitive to people's emotion. Cheer people up in your team. Uh, uh, an encouraging word is definitely something that can cheer people up in your team. Now, another important point is don't forget to say please and thank you, right? Uh, or sorry. Uh, let's read Colossians 4. And verse 6. Colossians 4 and verse 6. Yes, anybody? Colossians 4, verse 6. Uh, Colossians 4, 6. Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in a, converse, in a conversation not put them down, not cut them out. Amen. Amen. Now, when we begin to say please and thank you and sorry and 
express our emotions, uh, the message is presented in the right way. It demonstrates kindness, demonstrate gratitude, appreciation, uh, humility, sincerity, willingness. Now, here's the big problem. In ministry, sometimes, you know, we may, you know, go up the ladder, people may, you know, recognize us, we try to we start becoming famous. Then what happens is, I, I've seen this, where people don't want to say thank you, don't want to say sorry, you don't want to say please. No, I said, I, I, I'm, I'm here because, you know, I'm popular, famous. Uh, and this is a very, very wrong attitude, right? No matter how high we go, uh, the lower our, you know, we should lower ourselves, we should humble ourselves. Uh, the higher we go, the more we should humble ourselves. Right? And there are times uh, where I've seen, uh, you know, a couple of people that I know have said that, you know, my pastor, he actually uses bad language. I was shocked. Uh, he said, yeah, this pastor, he's, he's used bad language on me. Uh, you know, he's got upset he's used bad language. And he's not even said sorry. He's not even said apologize for it. He just acts that everything's all right. And uh, it made me realize that how important it is to uh, remember to walk in humility, right? No matter how famous or how well we're doing in the ministry, uh, walk in humility, say thank you, say sorry, say please, uh, apologize when we have to, uh, nothing wrong. And sometimes, you know, once we come to that place of leadership, we feel that saying sorry is is a is a sense of uh, you know failure. No, it's not. It, the, by saying sorry when you are wrong is is just bringing you to a higher place of maturity, right? So be be able to say that. Paul is writing to the Col Colossians. He's saying, "Be gracious in your speech," uh, right? So be gracious. Uh, and, and uh, you know, say thank you, welcome, please. These all make a big difference. Uh, now, uh, maybe some of us are in smaller settings, you know, maybe rural settings in ministry, ministering to, uh, you know, towns and villages. That's all right. Don't feel that, okay, they, 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 it doesn't matter for them. No, no, no. If you say it, they will begin to say it, right? If we say it, they will begin to say, they will be, they will learn from us. They'll realize, hey, oh, you know, pastor saying sorry. So even I should be able to say sorry to people around me. Or, you know, they're saying thank you and please. And when he doesn't really need to. Uh, and then they, the team, the, the people in the organization begin to follow those things. Right. Uh, next point. Be an encourager, even to those who don't like you. Let's read First Thessalonians five fifteen. First Thessalonians five fifteen. Yes, anybody? Uh, go ahead. First Thessalonians five fifteen. Okay, I'll read. See that no one pays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Right? See that no one pays back wrong for wrong. Be an encourager even to those who don't like you. Now, in the, in an organization, in a company, uh, there will be people who don't like you. They don't like what you stand for. Right? Uh, maybe you're standing for certain truths you st and they, they tell you, hey, you have to do this. Uh, only then the team will win. You don't have to do it. Now, when you don't do it, people don't, in your team may dislike you. They may dislike who you are, who you stand for. But as a believer in the organization, as a believer who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, be an encourager. Right? When you get an opportunity you know that this person doesn't like you. Go ahead and encourage them. 
right? And and you know, there's another verse that says, "If you love those who uh, do wrong to you, it's like you know, putting burning coals on their head. They'll be wondering why is this person, you know, even caring about me when I don't care about them, right? And so, being an encourager will really help your team. Uh, uh, saying good job, well done. These are things you know, I remember. We have this very young girl in our church, uh, uh, and she's from the northeast, uh, and she's a pastor's daughter. And she came to church. Uh, it's about three years back, and she plays a little bit of guitar. So I auditioned her, uh, and she plays really well. So she, I, I told her, you know, uh, you can start playing in church, uh, but she was very nervous. Uh, she said, "See, I'm used to." Uh, singing northeast songs uh you know the, their language sorry i don't know the name of that language uh but but i can't sing in english i can't lead in english it's it's very difficult for me um and so i said why don't you try because we are anyway is a small church now uh, and then you know you can try it's okay to make mistakes uh, so she i gave her to lead worship and uh, the first sunday she led you know she got really nervous uh, she forgot the songs and uh, she kept stopping in between looking at me and thinking you know why you know she felt really embarrassed uh, through the whole ordeal uh, but somehow she was able to finish the four or five songs and uh, she said pastor don't give me again it's you know you saw me today i was so nervous i forgot everything um and i said no you did a good job i mean all you need is a little bit of practice all you need is a little bit of you know preparation and then you can do better so uh, so i told her i gave her some suggestions i said okay why don't you write down right verse chorus verse bridge uh, and write down the you know the the way you want to sing the song and so that way you'll know okay this this is the structure of the song uh, intro and that there's an outro and and so i explained to her these things and then i made her lead again so um she led again and it was much better then i said okay great now you keep doing this keep learning new songs and uh, you know she kept doing it and over the, over the course of about 3 years she's become a wonderful worship leader she's really good uh, in the way she leads worship and uh, you know she's so confident now and so sometimes just these simple statements you know you can do it uh, uh, it's you know just encouraging people is really good right it, it can really build them up uh, now another very important point uh, to remember in an organization is to know your boundaries in socializing, especially corporate socializing. Right? Let's read Proverbs chapter five, eighteen to twenty-two. Proverbs five, eighteen to twenty-two. Yes, can anyone of us please read Proverbs five, eighteen to twenty-two? Yes, could anyone please read? Um, Proverbs 5, 18 to 22. So be happy with your wife and find your joy with the woman you married. Pretty, pretty and graceful as a deer. Let her charms keep your faith, keep you happy. Let her surround you with her love. Son, why should you give your love to another woman? Why should you prefer the charms of another man's wife. The Lord sees everything you do. When, when, wherever you go, he is watching. The sins of the wicked are a trap. They get caught in the net of their own sin. Amen. 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 Thank you, Avinas. Right. So now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this class, we spend about 40 to uh, 50 hours odd in the workplace. Now, it's very easy to let our guard away, right? Or to drop down our guard. Now, as believers in the workplace, we need to make sure that we set certain boundaries in our life. 
right now there will be times when you know when i'm talking about corporate sector i'll also bring in the ministry aspect as well now in the corporate there'll be times you'll have team outings or team picnics whatever and so your whole team goes and there's alcohol uh there's drinking and there's you know all kinds of things that are happening now nobody is there to tell you anything your wife and children may be at home and here in proverbs it says the lord sees everything you do wherever you go he is watching so we need to set certain boundaries if there's something if there's alcohol uh, uh, you know there's it's alcohol party or uh, there's drinking and all of that happening don't indulge in it uh, don't involve yourself in it set certain boundaries right uh, say hey uh, uh, sorry i'm not going to do this uh, i i won't be part of this right uh, and then there are times and we've seen this plenty plenty of times where in the corporate sector you know people uh who are married they you know they begin to like other women in the company and so for 40 50 hours every day uh in office they're there in the entire week uh they they you know they they were working together colleagues and so it's very likely that a guy may like a girl or a married woman may like a unmarried man and all of these things happen right there are plenty of all of this now remember as believers we should know our boundaries right know our socializing boundaries stay away from drinking stay away from womanizing uh you know stay away from flirting uh with people uh especially uh you know men and women begin to flirt with each other which is wrong uh, uh stand your guard this is a true uh you know this this will really mark your true character and your strength right uh, there will be times you will have to walk away from situations right now let me bring in uh in the ministry setting now in the ministry we may keep saying okay god loves you god loves you but we may end up in a pit of our own because we have ended up you know uh uh using women in the ministry or women using men in the ministry now this could be fatal in the eyes of god right this could just cause a whole big damage a big mark not only to you ourselves but also to the ministry that we are in I've seen plenty of ministries where pastors have been caught red handed or pastors have been you know uh, womanizing with church members and uh, or or you know this whole thing happens when pastors start uh, you know uh, uh, they they begin to meet with young men and women and they start counseling them and and so then it all starts off there right the place of vulnerability so know your boundaries in a corporate setting so some of the things that we follow in apc is um, so for example if uh, uh, uh if i want to if a girl comes up to me and says i want to talk to you this is some problems that i have now remember that you're married right uh, so so the first thing i say is i'll call my wife and we both will sit and talk right so now those who come to church they know that you know if uh, they want to talk to pastor uh, i mean if they want to talk to me regarding anything if it's a girl or a woman in the church they know that they have to first you know uh, that pastor will call his wife as well so what they do is they go directly to uh, you know my wife and they begin to talk to her uh, which is better right uh, that way they and so there are times that you know they would want uh, my opinion as well uh, so then we both sit together so that way we protect ourselves right uh, and so there are many things that we do as a ministry uh now don't the the foolish thing to do is to say okay no i am in the ministry so nothing will happen to me no you know peter writes that wonderfully he says be alert be aware because the enemy is like a roaring lion trying to devour anyone in its path right so just because we are pastor or team leader and all of that in the church does not mean the enemy is going to overlook us no he is going to come 
all guns blazing, trying to bring us down. So you and I are to know our boundaries, right? We should know our boundaries. Uh, I remember this happened, I think in 2013, this happened in another place. Uh, uh, it's happened in India. Uh, uh, it's another ministry. It, uh, I leave the ministry unnamed, but uh, this whole problem happened where this very good pastor, uh, the church was growing about 300, 400 people. And this pastor would, you know, uh, women and girls would come to, you know, take advice. And, uh, you know, so the wife was knew that, okay, as the ministry grows, pastor will be busy. Uh, and so he, he would always be outside. He would just come home late evenings and everything seemed okay. But later on, he, um, a few women in the church began to complain, saying that, you know, he would, uh, uh, you know, involve in, uh, you know, uh, physical acts as well. He would, uh, you know, there was a lot of engaging and flirting and, uh, you know, trying to overpower women and all of these things. And the wife got to know and she was heartbroken. And she just didn't know where to, you know, probably she didn't know where to hide at that time. And, uh, uh, and so the entire ministry was dented. Uh, things had to be put in place. It was a really difficult time. So he had to take a break. The wife and the husband had to you know, go through a whole uh, series of counseling and all of it. And it was a very difficult time. So especially, especially those in ministry, know your boundaries, right? It's a true place of strength and character, right? Uh, God honors those who honor him. So uh, the more we honor him in his life, God will honor us, right? Next point is honor your boss. Let's read Proverbs 27, 18. I'll read that. If you care for your orchard, you'll enjoy its fruit. If you honor your boss, you'll be honored. Now, it's so wonderful. Every aspect of the workplace is mentioned in the Bible. It's so much to learn from, right? If you care for your orchard, you'll enjoy its fruit. If you honor your boss, you'll be honored. No, but you don't know my boss. My boss is a terrible person. He's this, he's that, he's that. You know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't approve my leaves. He wouldn't give me a raise. He wouldn't give me a, uh, you know, he wouldn't uh, consider me for, a, uh, you know, a, a, a higher position. He, he's like this, he's like that. He's always angry. He's always crying or he's uh, never talks. He does this. So we have a lot of complaints about our boss. True, maybe true. But what does the Bible teach us? Honor your boss, right? Uh, uh, remember that our boss may see, may face bigger challenges than what we are facing, right? Treat him or her with respect. Give them your best support. Appreciate your boss. Now, there are times it's very difficult to appreciate the boss. So how can I appreciate him? He's not doing anything right. How can I appreciate him? Right? Now, don't appreciate the wrong that he's doing, but appreciate him because he's there and God has placed him there as his leader, as your leader. So just appreciate him for who he is. Right? Now, the mindset is sometimes we look at a boss and we think, okay, numbers, deadlines, work, projects, assignments, all of this. They forget he's a person, right? He has a family. He has children. Probably he, he's married and he has, you know, children and family. And uh, he's going through his own set of challenges. Uh, the Bible teaches us, honor your boss. Treat them with due respect. And do not take things lightly, right? Now, and this is in the corporate sector, right? whether they're bad, whether they're doing all things wrong, you still honor them. Now, what about in ministry? You got a senior pastor and you got 20 staff under you, right? And just because the senior pastor is a good pastor and a leader, don't come to a place of taking things casually just because they're all believers, right? We must know that Paul writes to uh, Timothy, 
right? And he says to Timothy, Timothy, exhort the leaders, rebuke, correct them, teach them. Second Timothy 3.16, he says, the word of God uh, is useful for rebuking, teaching, correcting, uh, and training, and bringing, and righteousness. Uh, so, just because somebody is a believer, don't take advantage. Right? I remember this one instance that happened. We had a uh, a manager who was uh, a very good believer who goes to a very famous church in Bangalore and uh, a wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, he was there only for a few months for us and then he moved up the ladder. Uh, but I remember he would always, you know, he had this whole uh, little calendar with Bible verses. Um, he would always, you know, he was very open to the gospel. He would just go about, go about sharing the gospel. And he was not ashamed of who he was. He was very open about Christianity and uh, about Jesus. And, you know, he would uh, literally, wherever he would get an opportunity, he would share. Wonderful man. Uh, uh, but what happened was... Uh, you know, there were, there were times in the, you know, there were deadlines and all of that. And many a times, some of them in our team would take him very lightly because, you know, he's a believer. He would always, you know, grace, give grace to the people. And I real, and we re began to realize that in the team, there were people who in the name of fasting, prayer, Bible study, all these things, they did not do their work. Right? Uh, they did not do their work. And... They would say, oh, oh uh, you know, uh, so I had uh, three days fasting prayer. So I could not, you know, uh, because I was fasting, I could not really have spending time. So he would initially say, okay, he's fasting, he's praying. Uh, or they, I had to go worship practice and I had work in the Bible study group and cell group and all these things. And then this one time, uh, you know, uh, we, were, we were having this Bible study. We used to have Bible study uh, before the work starts and uh, I remember we were having a, just a casual conversation and I told him uh, he, he's much senior to me but I just told him see Bible also tells us to work and work in the right way so those who are not doing it they have to be you know uh, uh, they need to be corrected and I, I don't remember if I gave him any verse but I did give him a few examples and he was, yeah, he was like, yeah, why should I, I should not take this as, because I'm dishonoring God with my work then, because I'm showing partiality. And he realized this whole thing and he became very stern and, and, and people stopped taking him lightly after that. So in ministry, especially when, when you have these leaders above us who are believers, don't take them lightly, right? Honor them. They are your boss. They are your leaders. So respect their word, whether it's ministry, whether it's corporate, right? Uh, respect them. Honor your boss, even the one who is harsh. There are bad bosses. There are bosses who are harsh, rude, uh, treating us with no respect. But we are to treat them with respect. And when we do this, we honor God, right? Uh, God is a God who will honor us. You know, people... you may not change. The, our bosses may not change the way they are, the, their character. They may not change. But when we honor them, God changes us. Right? He changes our whole uh, life, everything. He, he raises up, up to higher standards. Remember Daniel? Daniel honored the, the whole thing of Babylon. He didn't say, hey, Babylon is all about devils. You know, the word, the name Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are, are three demon gods of Babylon. They, they, they three didn't, you know, say, oh, how can you name me as a demon god of yours? We are Jews. They didn't bother about all that. But all they did was they honored the rules, the regulations of Babylon. Right? And uh, and so, you know, God honored them for because they honored the people in the land, their leaders. What did Daniel do, right? He, even though he honored his boss, but he stood strong to his character. His, he set certain boundaries. He said, I cannot eat of the king's table because I'm a Jew. And these are uh, not in line with what we, with our teachings. And the king honored that after that, right? And uh, later on, we see that even Joseph, 
you know joseph as well was uh, you know honored by god he he honored the king the pharaoh and god opened the right door remember promotion comes not from our boss it comes from god sometimes we can be people pleasing and say okay my boss and then we you know we keep buttering up our boss it's not going to work promotion comes from the lord it's the lord who will open doors so whether it's a good boss bad boss honor them the lord will honor you by opening the right doors he will lead you up he will bring you up to higher positions right uh, and it's true it's we have seen it in our lives right uh, god does not of course qualifications is important uh, but god does not always look at qualification god looks at our heart right joseph was not qualified he didn't go to the school of egypt to study about how to interpret dreams no god decided that i will raise this person up he had his own way of opening the door and he will do the same in our lives right so we yes we have to uh, you know do everything that has been assigned to us by our bosses uh, do it the right way but even as we do it we honor them the lord is watching over us he will open a door for us he will exalt us right he will lift us up when we honor him right develop workplace etiquette and cultural sensitivity right um now uh, i just want to bring out a few aspects here good workplace etiquette right saying hi good morning uh, these are simple things now uh for example you're in a in a phone conversation uh right you're sitting in the office phone con- you, you get a call I, i i don't know if you've seen you know people in the workplace you know they pick the call they start you know screaming and talking on the phone and everyone around them get disturbed it's not workplace etiquette right it's not the right way to do this right body language eye contact while talking attentiveness proper dress code punctuality orderness have you seen sometimes you know in the workplace you got these desk table with desk and then you open the desk and there's no place to even keep a pen it's full of things in that and uh, orderliness you know neatness these are all uh, workplace etiquettes cultural sensitivity is also to do with um, being sensitive to the people around us right what what is their culture uh what are the backgrounds uh and sometimes they are the whole thing now just because I mean, let me get this example right just because uh you know you're a christ we are a christians we are christians uh doesn't mean that we can go and uh you know sit next to a person who is a vegetarian and say no 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 i will eat non veg next to you because that's that i can't help it if you want you go somewhere else and sit right that that would be so wrong we are not sensitive to the culture around us right and so god is asking us you know to to maintain that uh, proverbs 23 1 to 3 says when you sit down to eat with someone important keep in mind who he is if you have a big appetite restrain yourself don't be greedy for the fine food he serves he may be trying to trick you so the proverb the writer here is only saying learn learn how to be learn workplace etiquette Learn, learn how to be culturally sensitive now in the ministry cultural sensitivity is something that is being that was always being questioned right we get you know sometimes we go on a tangent we go to the pulpit we start sharing we start talking about all the other religions other than jesus now, that would be so wrong i'm reminded of what uh, the book of john teaches us says jesus says you shall know the truth and the truth will set them free so at apc one of the things we very sternly follow on pulpit time is don't go talking about all these other things that are happening that is wrong that is wrong that is no don't focus on what is wrong focus on the word let the truth of the word of god which is life set people free 
right? Uh, we don't have to keep telling what is what other churches are doing, what other uh, religions are doing, why they are doing it. It doesn't make sense. They are all wrong. Uh, you know, just uh, discussing about all this on the pulpit time. Now that would be very wrong. Uh, we should be culturally sensitive, right? Uh, now, many a times uh, we would say, you know, church attacks have happened because we may not have been culturally sensitive, uh, talking about other religions harshly, and then they would come and start a problem and say, oh, this is church persecution. It is not church persecution. It is our irresponsibility or cultural insensitivity that has caused that. But I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Right? So be careful, uh, especially if you know that your your sermons are going online, or maybe if you know that you're, uh, you know, in a place where people from other religions are very easily able to access and listen to your sermons, or even watch you uh, preach or teach. Be, be culturally sensitive, right? Uh, there's this one event that happened where uh, this happened at North India when we went once. This pastor. This whole family came to Christ. It was wonderful. Uh, but then he was so stern and he said, everyone take those, you know, those pictures of the, uh, of the idols of these other gods. Go and throw it into the lake and burn it up or something they did. So they took all of it they, as a procession. They took pictures in order to say that, you know, we don't no longer believe. It became a big issue. And the entire village came and caught the pastor, beat him up, caught the family. The family lost their uh, jobs and uh, it just became a whole big problem. Why? Cultural insensitivity. We get to know Christ, learn how to, you don't have to prove it to people. You don't have to, you know, go about, uh, you know, doing all these things. Be sensitive. Yes, you could slowly just dispose it off. If it's, you don't have to take videos and do a procession and a, it became a whole problem. And then one of the team from our, uh, you know, there was this whole persecution relief team that was there in North India. They had to go uh, meet with the pastor, meet with the police. Uh, finally, the pastor was arrested and meet with the police and then say, okay, no, this is the thing. But what was it termed as? Christian persecution. Right? So it was not Christian persecution, it was cultural insensitivity. We need to be very sure that we know what we are doing, right? When the heat is on, behave wisely. Uh, meaning when there is, you know, constant, maybe this whole feeling of, uh, you know, uh, in a team maybe or in the ministry, this whole feeling of, okay, we need to get things done. Remember David? Um, David killed Goliath and then they all started singing and saying hey uh, Saul killed thousand David killed tens of thousands Saul King Saul became jealous of David so he put David in the military hoping that David would you know uh, be destroyed but Saul tried his best to get rid of David but David behaved wisely right he didn't say David didn't say hey Saul do you know that I killed Goliath. Your whole, you and your whole army were sitting in, you know, shivering in your tents. I went and killed Goliath, and because of me, you all have destroyed the Philistines. Now, how long will it take for me to kill you? Did David say that? No. He behaved wisely. He acted prudently, meaning he acted wisely. He knew that no matter what, uh, you know, King, the King Saul is my king. God has placed him there. I'll just keep quiet. I will run away from my life. He is behind me, but I will run away from my life. I know that God is with me. Uh, and at the right time, God will stand for me. And, and he acted very, very wisely at such a young age. Right? So when the heat is on, act wisely. In a corporate setting, you know, your boss may be really upset. And you know, say, everybody come to the conference room and he may just go on and on. He may say, these are the things you all didn't do. And these are... don't stand up and say, that's because, you know, you know, you guys, you as a leader haven't done this, this, this. No, that's a wrong time to bring that up. Be here wisely. Remember how to bring out things, how to, when the heat is on, 
right? There are times when we can speak. There are times we just need to keep quiet uh, and let God do the work, right? Right, our time is up. We'll continue from here uh, and uh, we'll pick up from next week. All right, uh, let's close quickly in prayer. Uh, uh, anybody want to close in prayer? Uh, Avinas, why don't you close in prayer for us? Yes, yeah, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time and the moment that you have provided for us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the, all the resources. Thank you for the, all the information, Father God, that you put in the Bible and we are now learning, Father God. Thank you for the sources, Father God, that you have provided these books. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, Father God, as we are learning, Lord Jesus, as we, as we are pursuing, Lord Jesus, help us to learn and understand more, Father God, what your word says, Lord Jesus, for a for a specific work, Lord Jesus. We submit each fellows into your mighty hand, Lord Jesus. We submit pastors into your mighty hand, Jesus, Father God. As we are grown, Lord Jesus, we ask you, leader, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to lead us and guide us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Abhinas. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a great day ahead. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.